Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what he said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have had no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. further meditation on the prayer, the Hail Mary. Now, if you remember two years ago, I preached on the meaning of Hail Full of Grace, and last year I preached on the meaning of the Lord is with you. This year, I'm preaching on blessed are you among women. Whenever the word blessed is used in scripture, it means a few things. Primarily, it means unity with God for a special relationship to God. Note the words, blessed are you among women, are not spoken by the, incarn by, the, by the Archangel Gabriel at the Incarnation. Rather, they're spoken by Elizabeth when Mary travels to assist her in her pregnancy. Now, it's interesting the way this unfolds. Mary travels to the hill country and greets Elizabeth as she enters the house. As soon as Elizabeth hears Mary's greeting, the infant in her womb, Elizabeth's womb, John the Baptist, leaps for joy. Elizabeth is then filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaims these words, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. So the first part of the prayer, the Hail Mary, is a composition of what the Archangel Gabriel names her and what Elizabeth names her. Just as Gabriel names Mary full of grace when he first encounters her, Elizabeth names her, Blessed are you, when she first encounters her. But this is not at Elizabeth's prompting. Both of these promptings are from the Holy Spirit. The Lord obviously tells the Archangel Gabriel what to say to Mary. Elizabeth speaking in the Spirit is a little more complex. Elizabeth first hears Mary's voice. She hears the voice of her who has been immaculately conceived. She hears the voice of the sinless virgin who is presently pregnant with God, the incarnate word. She hears this. And there's an immediate response. Is that response from her? No. That immediate response is from her son, John the Baptist, still in her womb. Elizabeth's son, who is destined to be the herald, the prophet of the incarnate word. Now, prophets did not speak or act on their own accord. If they did, they got into trouble. They had to be prompted by the Spirit first. So when Elizabeth hears Mary's greeting, John hears it also and leaps for joy. You know, it's ironic. We always picture John the Baptist as the original fire and brimstone preacher. But the first time we ever meet John the Baptist is in an act of praise, in an act of rejoicing. When John leaps for joy, Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit and John being in her womb is also de facto filled with the Holy Spirit as well. In that moment, John the Baptist becomes a prophet while he's still in his mother's womb. And since John didn't have a voice to prophesy with, his mother Elizabeth does it for him. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. 
You know, folks, I don't understand how some Catholics and some Christians not only don't have a problem with abortion themselves, but try to pretend that God doesn't have a problem with it either. And I hear statements like, well, Jesus never explicitly said that abortion was wrong in the scriptures. You're right. He didn't. It's not there. But Jesus didn't say lots of things are wrong explicitly. Jesus never once said that rape is wrong in scriptures. Does that mean rape is okay with God because Jesus didn't explicitly condemn it? No. That reasoning is foolish. All throughout the scriptures, we see many examples of the intimacy between mother and child even before that child is born. And that intimacy is used as a comparison by the prophets to describe God's intimacy with his people. To not see that is to not know scripture or to blatantly ignore it. So Mary is blessed, but why is she blessed? A woman once calls out to Jesus, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that nursed you. Almost an exact repeat of what Elizabeth says. But Jesus responds, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Huh? I mean, is Jesus ditzing his mother? Is Jesus disagreeing with this woman's statement? Is Jesus saying that Mary was not blessed? No. But at the same time, he doesn't want people to lose sight of the big picture. The reason why Mary is blessed is the same reason each one of us can be blessed. Mary heard the word of God and always kept it. Mary is Jesus' perfect disciple. She is always pondering the events in the life of her son, the word of God. Jesus is having dinner at the house of a leading Pharisee on another occasion, and one of the guests say to him, Blessed is he who eats of the kingdom of God. Seems straightforward enough. What does Jesus do? He breaks into a parable about a king throwing a wedding banquet for his son, and he sends word to all the invited guests to come to the feast, but they all have lame excuses for backing out. They are all preoccupied with good things, but earthly things. In a rage, the king tells his servants to uninvite all the invited guests and get all kinds of people off the streets in the marketplace to fill up his banquet hall. And there's still more room, so he orders the servants to go into the countryside and the byroads to fill up his hall because none of those I invited will taste any of my feast. What did the invited guests do that so offended the king? They made a commitment they didn't see through. They placed other things as more important than the invitation that was being extended to them. Mary always responded with a willingness to do God's will, from the incarnation to Calvary. Where do we see the word blessed most often? In the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed are the lowly, blessed are the pure of heart, blessed are those persecuted for righteousness sake. If you look at all of those beatitudes, they all apply to the blessed mother. She lived each one of them. And that's why she is blessed. And that's how we can be blessed as well. Please note, it's not blessed are you among people or blessed are you among believers or humans or even creation. It's blessed are you among women. Why women in particular? Because Mary fulfills every vocation of woman perfectly. Mary is virgin, consecrated to the Lord. Yet Mary is also the wife of Joseph, betrothed in marriage. Mary is daughter of the Most High God, yet Mary is also mother of the Most High God. Mary is also sister to the saint and the sinner. Note, who stands with the Blessed Mother at the crucifixion? Mary Magdalene and Mary the wife of Clophis. Ever wonder the significance of three Marys at the foot of the cross? Mary the wife of Clophis is Mary's cousin, her blood relative. Mary Magdalene is the repentant sinner. Now related to Mary through the blood of the Lamb. The Blessed Mother is sister to them both. All of these things make Mary blessed. And they are all tied together. Through the blessed fruit of her womb, Jesus. But that's the homily next year. Mary Immaculate, most blessed among women. Pray for us that follow your example, that we too may be truly blessed. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.